Can body positive and fitness enthusiasts find middle ground? Maybe. Maybe somewhere in the middle of a gym. Let's find out. In an effort to not have challenging conversations in this day and age, it's like, well, you do you, like whatever's best for you, but then what if best for you is actually harmful to yourself and or others? What does that mean? I'm very confused. Did you notice how none of these body positivity people were body positivity people and they're all actually fat positive people? There's a difference. Body positivity is for people with like what you would consider like some kind of like disfigurement that they literally cannot control. These people like myself are ob obese. This isn't really like it's a fat positivity person. Like say that. It's for fat positive people. Like it's a very different thing. That guy's jacked out of his fucking marbles. My is a top priority in my life. None of those fat people can sit down. Wow. I'm assuming when they said that their health is a priority, it means like deteriorating their health at a record pace is their priority. I'm just like speaking from experience, man. Like I'm fat. Like it's not, it's clearly not our priority. It should be. You but, never know uh, how bad you feel until you start feeling better than you've ever felt in your life. And I've been on both ends of the spectrum and damn, it's very different to now being like really focused on the mind, body and soul and like really having all parts just as equal as the other. For me, I am a cancer survivor and so That's my terrible. entire life now is about making sure that I have a life, you know, to right. continue, so. Yeah, I was diagnosed with lymphedema at age three, which mm -hmm. affects the circulation for me through my legs and feet. So health for me has always been at the top of my mind because if I don't take care of my body, like my, I could have an amputated foot or leg. Mm -hmm. So it's nothing that I play around with. I don't know, bro, because I feel like if I was, I don't know, like, like being overweight is a massive stressor on the body. And usually like you're overweight, like being overweight is associated with eating bad foods because you're usually full from eating like micro nutrient dense foods. Um, you know what I mean? So all okay. of my family almost has suffered from diabetes, uh, heart disease and stuff like that. So that's why I'm extra conscious. That guy's on fucking tech, bro. He's on, he's on, he's on vitamin fucking tea if you know what i'm saying dude. it's about my health because i don't want to come down with any of those diseases he's also a little short he's a little manlet and no offense that guy he's looking jack but i have a regular workout routine hey, Rich. i've been working out consistently since i was 19 years old i used to work out two hours a day but then i realized wow. it's way too long yeah. so now my workout sessions with weights are about 45 minutes and then the rest is stretching and cardio and I spend a lot of time stretching because it allows me to get in the zone, kind of like a meditation of sorts. It's all mental. Okay. Like I go to the gym or work out or do something kind for my body in forms of movement every day because it keeps me sane. Like if I don't go That's there, fair. then I feel like- I suppose you can be overweight and healthy. You know, uh, these people aren't like morbidly obese, so, but still, I, f you know. Something's missing and Same I get here. a little bit depressed. Absolutely. Singing all by myself back there. Mm -hmm. I you should just lied. The the fucking the girl in the yellow shirt probably lied. She's like, oh, I'm gonna sit down because I don't want to be the only one standing up. I was going to the gym regularly every day for like six months, and then no, it wasn't. my life shifted. I lost. He's lying. Lost my father. Like a lot of things happened in my life. Just go find him. I'm sorry. Life that um, threw off my whole routine, and so the point when when I was going to the gym so regularly, I felt like my brain felt happier. Like I've gotten that feeling back in other ways. I have no desire in me to change my body in any way. Mm -hmm. I like when my buckets a little bigger. Not, I agree with you on that not, one. Not. <sighs> it's one of those things. It's like it's a common thing that fat people. I know, I'm speaking from experience. That I guess we do. It's like we there's a part of us that's like, yeah, I like being fat. You know, because we've been fat for so long and we've had to like manipulate ourselves into thinking that like we like to be fat. Even with me, it's like, oh my, like if like you hear a lot of fat people to be like, I want to lose weight, but I don't want to be too skinny. You know what I mean? Like that, it's one of those things where it's like, it's a common thing that, that fat people will say. At all. 
See, this is where we're going to no. get, because I will yeah. tell you, not every big person wants to be small. Yes. I just explained that. I'm conscious about what I eat. I'm fucking conscious, but after I eat it, I'm fucking unconscious. <laughs> stike, because I eat too much. You can be conscious about what you... That, is, is, that, why, is this dude sweating profusely? How hot is it there? Bro, I swear to God that that's all, like, armpit. That's crazy, bro. That guy sweats a lot. Holy fuck. My mom had me in Weight Watchers in junior high. I feel like he's probably self-conscious about it. Yeah. Like, so my relationship he should be body with positive. food and what I'm putting into my body has been, like, completely, can we curse, fucked up, like, since right. the very, very yeah. beginning. Had Weight Watchers isn't that bad. I remember last time. It's basically just counting calories, but, like, it's more fun. You know what I mean? Like, you can eat fruits and vegetables without having to track it, but everything else is, like, tracked in a point system. Your sugar addiction since I was a kid. And, it, like, the binge yeah. eating, like, it makes you feel like everything, I can't have this. This is the enemy. So yeah. when I see it you and I can it have it, more. I'm like... Oh, I want to eat it all. Every day I wake up, I have a green smoothie. I'm always very conscious of like what I'm putting into me, which I think is, I'm just gonna say the controversial statement, I think is something that people would never think is true based off the size of my body. There's so much studies that are coming out like in terms of like your microbiome, like the microbiome that you have, like you can literally eat green smoothies and eat like everything you're supposed to be eating and not lose the weight because yeah. you have an imbalance in your microbiome. And like- Dude, shut the fuck up. This woman's an idiot. Bro. It's it's very it's it's calories in calories out like that's really what what losing weight it's quite literally nothing else but calories in calories out it, there's no way to lose weight but to to re reduce the amount of calories you eat down below your maintenance right like so if it's not a lie there's nothing there's literally nothing else that can help you lose weight other than calories in and calories out like you eat fewer calories than your body needs to maintain and you lose weight it's it. Your body quite literally needs to burn fat off of you if you're not eating enough. <laughs> like that's how it works. That is that is energy storage. It's it's crazy. Like and then people who are thin, they're just really thin, but they eat McDonald's every day. Yeah, it doesn't it doesn't matter how much they're clogging their arteries sure. and they die. It doesn't matter. Yeah, see like you're saying, you can still be unhealthy. It's like you you'll lose weight if you eat less than your maintenance calories. And like you'll be more healthy if you eat more micronutrient dense foods and like cleaner foods, non processed foods. Um, obviously, eating cleaner foods fills you up faster and fills you up more, so you'll be full faster. But like, it doesn't matter. You're, you're, those are two different subjects. I have heart attacks more than quote unquote big people. It's quote I unquote. That's true. I did. I remember one time. So just so you guys know, I have a half sister. I met her when I was 14 years old and uh, we shared a father, a sperm donor. And I remember going, <laughs> I think some of you guys know the story. I remember going out to eat. It was uh, Thanksgiving, I believe. It might be the first time that I met my sister um, in public and we met with our moms, right? She was 12. I was 14. And we, our moms chaperoned it. Obviously, we're fucking kids. And the first thing, one of the first things her mom said to me, I remember this vividly, is she, I think she gave me a hug. And then she said, you know, you look, you have a really nice face. You'd look better if you weren't, if you were, if you weighed less. It's very interesting. Now, obviously, what I should have said to her was, you have a nice face too. You'd look better if you had your tits still, because she had breast cancer and she had her breast removed. But that obviously would have been rude. And I wasn't a snappy young, like, a, I didn't have a quick wit at that point. So I wasn't able to blah, to bite back. But it's very interesting. It's very, very interesting. So out of pocket, hey, listen, I fucking, I'm vindictive, okay? I would have people, like, some family members be like, oh, you look a little heavier than you did last year. And then other family members that were a lot more direct, like, mm. oh, when are you going to lose the weight? And it's been like that, I would say, my whole life. And then we got to a point where I was getting compared to my little sister, who's, like, beautiful and thin. And it's like, it is so hard. Not <laughs> then to what happened to you? I'm just kidding. That's terrible. To other people. It is so hard to have a healthy relationship with yeah. food and with fitness and just with other people. And it became so difficult to break out of that and to really love who I am inside. Sure. My stepmom would take like, if I had a wrapper of chips, like in my room, like she would put it on top of like my, my dresser and say like, 
I'm not the reason why you're fat. This is like it, it was all very like. Why would she be the reason you're fat? What the hell? I mean, we missed a chapter. But it was super crazy psychological because I was like, we've never even discussed this before. <laughs> oh. I'm from Texas. We all eat soul food. So everybody was eating the same shit food. So my mom, 250 pounds, my brother, 350 pounds. But I saw that I was eating the exact same foods and I didn't even know until I got around. He had a tapeworm. Los Angeles health conscious people. I'm like, what? Yeah. What, you mean to tell me you don't have freaking bacon cheeseburger every single day? I didn't know. So like when you got to LA, what triggered it the, in your head that said, the, oh. The muscular, muscular guy is like always like, you see, he's like always like on it. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, it seems like he always has something to say, but he never says anything. Oh, this to me is the right way for me to look. I now. wanted to, I wanted to be a model. The idea that you wanted to become a model, and the only idea of model to you meant being yeah. thin or fit or whatever that beat yeah, means. That's all I saw because it wasn't as popular. Like plus, I mean, like yeah, plus size models exist so that fat people like myself feel represented. But like most people want to look what you'd consider attractive, which is like leaner and more muscular, especially like putting more work into your body. So. I, what, that's what you would look like as a model. That's a weird. Plus size wasn't popular back then yeah. when I was 18 years old. Plus size is definitely not popular. No, but it's, but it's still, it still opened up way more the than it was when I was <sighs> The conversation, I will say, is much more broad now. I feel like yeah. we're, yes. we're able to talk about these things a lot easier now than we were before, but what the actual way that the industry treats plus size models is totally different. Sometimes people use being body positive as an excuse not to take care of themselves. Yes. Everybody should step forward. What? This question. How is she not stepping forward? Of course people say body positive is an excuse not to lose weight. It makes me very passionate. This is really big for me because I've been like come for from other body positive influencers, but I feel like that messages other Every body positive inf well, let's actually rephrase. Every fat positive influencer. Not body positive because like body positivity is different from fat positivity. Every fat positive uh, fat positive influencer should be always talking about how you, if you want to be healthy and fat, you have to take a f tremendous steps in towards doing so. Because realistically speaking, like, here's the thing. We talked before about skinny people being unhealthy and eating unhealthy foods and fat people doing the same. Skinny people who eat unhealthy foods, just like fat people who eat unhealthy foods, are still going to be healthier because they're eating less food overall. So they're eating less shitty food compared to the fat person. So, like, you know, you, it takes a lot more to be a fat, healthy person. So you kind of have to eat good. You know, it's not good for you either way, but my point is, is like, you know, if you're not talking about how you need to be healthy and work harder to, to maintain being fat and healthy, then you're a shitty, you're a shitty fat, like a, a fat positivity, like model or whatever. Other people yes. put out are very dangerous to a young woman who thinks that it's okay. I don't care what size you are. It's not okay to sit and eat cheeseburgers and ice cream all day like that has Says you <laughs> I think there's a difference between acceptance and agreement so Come like on. you can accept your body and be in disagreement with the health situation that you have this woman right? definitely teaches yoga and like does aim like does like fucking like fruit juice enemas right? like we hear fit experts always saying be skinny, lose weight. That's the healthy way yeah, to do like, it. Yeah, like how could you love your say, body if you're fat? At least we don't say like, be fat because it's better for your heart. It's, it's better for your soul. It's better for your, you know. No, nobody. You just ignore the criticism and say that being fat is fine and it's beautiful and it's healthy and nothing. Yeah, that's honestly even what you just said, like body acceptance versus body agreement. Like to you, you might see one of us and be like, oh, they love, they accept their bodies, but I'm sure they don't agree with what it looks like. I mean, I I wouldn't know unless I talked with someone, but yeah. like. Whatever the number, like, I'm whatever, like, is coming up in terms of, like, you know, when you go I to the I think I'm going like, to eat, uh, at the end of the day, no, raw hot dogs after this. As fit people, when you see a person who is overweight or fat or obese, however you want, whatever term you want to use, what's the first thing that happens in your head? Do you think, like, oh, like, it's great that they accept themselves, but they could use to lose weight? Or what is your first thought my, when you my, see something? My very first thought, no, no one's, like, born that way. So you you like there's That's habits true. and things that you observe. But you from actually can't be born with that. Say, like no, we could eat be, the yeah. exact no, no, same no, thing no, and no, and be two different so, people. Could, yeah, well, no shit. Of course, you're two different people. Different people require different calorie amounts to sustain based on their activity level and their genetics. 
but you're not born fat. <laughs> like, that's his point. Like you're weirdly overcomplicating this to just justify eating like shit. Here, How you're here, raised, parenting yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, very um, environmental. I didn't really know what to expect today. I didn't know how the body positive individuals were going to come across. I didn't know if they were for a healthy lifestyle or not, but I think it's beautiful that they, you guys acknowledge The most body positive people when they're pressed in public about it, they'll say that they're for a healthy lifestyle and they'll lie to you and say that they used to go to the gym for six, like six months ago or whatever for a long time, blah, blah, blah. Like they'll lie right out their ass because they know that it's shameful to be fat because like it's bad for your health. Um, and you know that it has a, you have a self control problem. And I'm sorry I'm being so blunt, but it's the truth. Um, and part of it's because sugar is more addictive than like cocaine and like other drugs. It's fucking insane. But uh, you know we have to acknowledge these things because if we can acknowledge them, then we can control them. Knowledge how important it is to keep yourself healthy. <laughs> Do I feel like there are people in the body positive community that say, "Well, I'm just happy being yeah. fat, and I'm just going to lay down and just do that." Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Then why did you disagree? The, the question was, do you think some people use it? So then, absolutely, absolutely. What you the hell? I, I, fat pride hashtag Fat Pride is like was something that yeah. was going on it's for a little while. Big, just body positivity in general yeah. is kind of a big buzzword that exactly. everyone. Just no, it's exactly. not. It's not He's body positivity. Body positivity. Stop saying body positivity. It's fat positivity. It's very different. The fact that they're not saying fat positivity should be very telling to you guys. Activity and like health and stuff is different. Like, yeah. is yeah. that what everybody thinks? The actual body positive community was created to give a platform to bodies that have been marginalized in our society. Right. That's what it was actually created for. Yeah, but when they say marginalized, they mean like in the sense of like people who are uncontrollably like a, a different, right? Um, not people who stuff their face with margarine. So, like, I just feel like we need to keep that in mind. I mean, big bodies, big bodies disabilities, super, super skinny F, bodies, you know, I mean, uh, what right, different races. And you like, I, like, yeah, fat people, and then also like anorexic people. It's like, dude, you're all over the place. Like, the screen because I'm like, actually, this is not meant for you. This is meant for bodies who who don't have a voice. The fitness community is the reason why the body positive community exists, and I think that. As a community, it's important for you guys to be a little bit more inclusive. People come up to me. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. They just cut that guy off when he was making a cut. Why the fuck they cut him off? It was really great talking with you guys on that. I think we really did find a middle ground. Shut the fuck up. What was he saying? Yeah. Um, but we did. I think we all realized that it's like not, it's not this line. It really isn't a line. Pride and ego out. Let's freaking. One thing I was going to say is that it ties into what we were talking about before. How like if you see a fat person in the gym, they, you shouldn't shame them. They're trying to better themselves. Oh, I know. Yeah. I love yeah. how the actual line. But yeah, a lot of fitness centric people are assholes. Actually 